The story of the disappearance of Flight 19 is often called one of aviation's most enduring mysteries. The popular version goes like this. A few months after the end of the Second World War, five U.S. Navy TBM Avenger torpedo bombers took off on a training mission from their airfield at Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The plan was to fly east, out over the ocean, drop practice bombs on a shoal near Bimini in the Bahamas, and then perform overwater navigation training. The planes were to turn north, fly 70 miles, and then turn back southwest to return to Fort Lauderdale. If you trace that flight plan on a map, it looks exactly like a triangle. Four hours later, the flight was overdue and running low on fuel. The flight leader called in on the radio to report that they were lost. His compass was spinning wildly, night was falling, and the surface of the sea suddenly looked somehow strange to him. That's the last that anyone heard from Flight 19. Sadly, five planes and 14 men went missing that day. It gets worse, however, because when Flight 19 didn't return, the Navy launched a search and rescue effort. Two planes went out, but only one returned. The other plane also disappeared, supposedly just like Flight 19. Another 13 lives were lost. In all, six planes and 27 men had simply vanished as if into thin air. For the next five days, the Navy undertook an intensive search. Despite that, no sign of the planes or the men was ever found. In fact, to this day, no trace of Flight 19 has ever been found. This is the story that gave birth to the legend of the Bermuda Triangle. Hundreds of ships and airplanes supposedly have mysteriously vanished there over the years, and all this mayhem has been blamed on everything from UFO abductions to magnetic anomalies, electrical storms, and worse. So check your disbelief at the door, because we're about to take a deep dive into the myth and the reality of what really happened to Flight 19. There are seven leading theories out there. The first is that Flight 19 is a case of UFO abduction. Okay, I'm not saying it's aliens, but yeah, it's aliens. That idea really took on a life of its own after the 1977 release of Steven Spielberg's movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. His film took advantage of the growing popularity of the myth of the Bermuda Triangle and its roots in the missing planes of Flight 19. At the start of the movie, the planes are found 1,500 miles away from Florida in the deserts of New Mexico. At the end, when the alien mothership lands, the first to walk off are a group of bewildered naval aviators, not looking a day older than when they were lost. One by one, they report in with their name, rank, and serial number. The names match the story. And as for the other evidence supporting UFO abduction, well, there is none. Hollywood trumps reality every time. The second theory is that the planes flew into a series of strange electrical storms. Maybe they were hit by lightning. Their radio calls were blocked by electrical disturbances and interference. It's true that the weather was bad that day. When Flight 19 departed, the winds were strong out of the east, about 35 knots, which is pretty brisk. The ocean waves were three meters high, with white caps. But there was no lightning, and their radio reports weren't blocked either. In fact, there's even a transcript available that logs frequent and regular communications among the planes and with Fort Lauderdale. At one point, a Navy ship in the area was able to get a position fix on their signals. Still, the wind and waves were pretty strong. No doubt the pilots were pushed pretty far to the east by the winds. And further, if they had crashed into the sea, with the height of the waves, they would have had little chance of successfully ditching the planes, climbing into life rafts, and later even being spotted had they survived the impact. The third theory, the planes might have been grabbed by sea monsters and dragged down into the ocean depths. Like UFO abductions, this is also one of those crazy, imagined scenarios. It's so preposterous that even Hollywood hasn't made a movie about that one yet. The fourth theory, there's been some pseudoscientific debate about the potential that methane gas builds up under the seabed the theory goes that from time to time, the sea burps up these bubbles. Huge amounts of methane gas then explode rapidly to the surface, causing the seas to boil. 
and as methane is lighter than air, it rises quickly too. Theoretically, methane gas bubbles could be so big that ships on the surface would fall into the sea, which then would collapse around them, swallowing them whole into the depths. Airplanes overhead could potentially fall out of the sky. The obvious problem with this theory is we've never seen one of these methane gas bubble explosions. Like ever. The fifth theory claims that the planes might have flown into a time warp. This is actually my favorite. Folds in space-time somehow are supposed to come together just there, right in the Bermuda Triangle. Thus, over the centuries, hundreds of ships have sailed from one century into the next, going forward and backward through time. Sometimes they emerge from a fog, looking unchanged after a hundred years at sea, somehow without any sign of their crews. Hollywood loves this kind of thing. There have even been a few movies done about that. But is there any scientific evidence to prove it? Number six is the rogue wave. The idea here is that the planes are flying along and suddenly a rogue wave comes out of nowhere and swamps them all at once. Together, all five planes of Flight 19 would smack right into the front of the large wave and sink to the bottom of the sea. Rogue waves do exist, and they can be three or four times the height of the other waves around them. But at their highest, they might crest at 100 feet. Typically, Navy pilots would fly at altitudes that range between 1,500 feet and 10,000 feet. If you saw a rogue wave ahead of you, why would you fly into it without pulling up? The seventh theory is the claim of magnetic anomalies. The story goes that Lieutenant Taylor, who was the instructor pilot leading Flight 19's training that day, reported over the radio that he had a wildly spinning compass. A BBC documentary from about a decade ago actually dramatized the radio report, and Lieutenant Taylor says something like, My compass is spinning wildly, and the surface of the sea looks weird. Except it didn't happen that way. What Lieutenant Taylor actually said was this, Both my compasses are out, and I'm trying to find Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So what we have is a case of an instrument failure, as was common in airplanes of that type in that era. So there was no wildly spinning compass. Also, there was no report of the seas looking weird. But with each retelling, the story of Flight 19 has slowly evolved. On the other hand, the Navy's first investigation blamed the loss of Flight 19 on the flight leader, Lieutenant Taylor. Radio transcripts from that afternoon proved that he was simply lost. He took the flight in the wrong direction, and in the end, they ran out of fuel and crashed into the sea. As for the search and rescue plane, the Navy concluded that a problem with the fuel system caused it to explode in midair. Sailors on a nearby ship even witnessed the explosion. They steered over to see if they could find any survivors. There were none. None of that is as exciting as sea monsters, giant methane gas bubbles, wildly spinning compasses, UFOs, or alien abductions. But then you never know. They say the Bermuda Triangle never gives up its secrets. I'm Thomas Van Hare, and this is Historic Wings. If you like these videos, please subscribe and click like, and consider sponsoring us through Patreon or PayPal. And remember, there's always more to the story.